Okay, my name's Tina, and we're at the uh, Mendocino Music Camp, the Middle Eastern Music Camp. And what I've got here is a Renaissance violin. It's a copy of a violin that was made by Amachi, who's a fairly famous maker, in 1580. And those of us who play Renaissance music, which is what I do professionally, we like having instruments that are just from the right time and place because the music feels different when you play it on the right instrument. So this violin looks like a modern one, but when you get close, it really doesn't exactly. The, the fingerboard's kind of short. As a matter of fact, to look at this angle. Most modern fingerboards, they're angled up, and this one isn't really. So there's a little wedge under it, but not much. Cool. And you also notice that the strings are made out of sheep gut, which is what they were made of at the time. And this one, to make it, to make it low, you have to make it kind of thick and textured. Wow. Kind of cool. Now, sheep gut is really sensitive to changes in temperature and humidity, so this is a bear to play. But it really sounds cool. Also, the bass bar underneath there is shorter. And um, this, actually, the neck is a little shorter, too, because you don't spend so much time shifting. So take a look at the back, too, because that's really pretty. Yeah. And it's great having an it's instrument. It's one piece based, on the back. Huh? Yeah, it's a one-piece back. It's great having an instrument that's based on a historic instrument because it gets you about as close as you can without spending thousands of dollars. And then this bow is a Renaissance bow, and you notice the differences so that it doesn't bend underneath here. It goes over, and then it has that cute, what they call swan, swan's head at the, at the end, little point. Cool. And so when you play this bow, the balance point's a little higher, and so you find yourself playing it there. A lot of these bows have clip-in frogs, but that's really hard in the summer. It gets very loose. So Renaissance violin players, very much closer to folk players, they don't do this with a chin rest. You notice I don't have a chin rest or a pad, but <clears throat> you push it in and it's closer to here. Not there, but there, so that you're resting on the, the bone here and the bone there. You're resting right between them. Arabic style, but so it's a nice, light, cheerful sound, uh, and the technique is much different than the modern violin. You notice my arm is hanging, and this arm is down, and we spend a lot of time doing things like this. Cool. Where do you teach, and where do you live, and well, I, I play in a group, I and I run a group called Hesperus. Did you bring that recorder? And Hesperus. I, I, I live in Washington, D.C., and I play and direct with a group named Hesperus. I play with and direct. How many people are in that group? Hesperus, well, we have a kind of roving contingent. We do um, early music, medieval and renaissance and baroque, and then we do things like Spanish colonial and British colonial, and then we do fusions of early music and American folk music, like medieval and Appalachian. Cool. And um, one of the things we really do is medieval, and it's important to know a lot about Arabic music when you do medieval. So I thought that I would come here and learn a little bit more so I could apply it. Do you have a website? We do. It's hesperus.org, which will send you immediately to our manager because our website's under transition since I seem to be under transition myself when I'm the director. Hesperus, spell it for me. H-E-S-P-E-R-U-S. -E Thank you very much. <laughs>